In this video, I'm going to cover a visual effect for HTML surfaces called glass morphism. We're going to use that effect to create an authentication screen. So by the end of the video, we're going to have something that's going to look like this. If you're new here, I'm Arjan. I've been teaching computer science for over 20 years and I've launched several software companies. On this channel, I talk about software design and software development. Now, I know there are several glass morphism effect videos out there on the tube. So I'd like to do things a bit differently on this video. I'm not going, just going to share CSS with you, which is frankly not that interesting, but I'm going to create a component in React that integrates with Material UI, a very popular user interface library. So I'm also going to add a few props to help you better control the visuals of the component, such as changing the color or disabling or enabling features of glass morphism. Finally, I'm using TypeScript for this example. Why? because I think everybody should start using TypeScript instead of JavaScript. It's a pretty simple project that I started with Create a React App. You can get the code from the GitHub repository. There's a link in the description below. What you see here is the starting point of this application. It's a very basic authentication form. It has an email address and a password, a button, some links. I basically took this as a template from the Material UI website. It's nothing special. I put a background image behind it so that it looks a bit less boring. And we're going to use that later on because we're going to add the glass morphic effect to this card that you see here. If you look at the code, it has a few components. There is a form. It contains a paper object, which is a basic Material UI surface. And then there's a div inside that, that has the content. So it's avatar, text fields, a label, buttons, some links, anything. So app is a functional component and I'm using the use styles hook to create the styles for the various parts of this paper surface that you see here. The app itself has background image that I put in here. That's simply the height of the screen. This is the setup. It already looks pretty nice actually. Maybe I should just stop the video right now. Just kidding. Let's get started by adding a glass card component. So I'm going to create a new file here in the source folder called glass card. As a basis for the glass card, I'm going to use the material UI box components. So that's actually what I'm going to return here. A box basically behaves like a div, but it has a few extra useful properties like simple way of setting the margin or padding on the component. So I'm just gonna use that here for that reason. Now I want to expose those properties to the user of class card so you can actually also use the box props directly. So let's create an interface for class card props and then let that inherit from box props. And now obviously we also wanna pass the values of these props to the box component. I'm gonna do it like this because I'm gonna add extra props to the glass card later on so I can just add them very easily here. So now we have a glass card. And let's already change the application to use the glass card instead of the paper component. So what we now have is basically the most unreadable authentication form ever. So let's start to add the glass style so we can actually make this look a lot better than it looks now. Now glass card is a functional component, so I'm also going to use the use styles mechanism here. So there we have our basic glass style and now I'll just use the use styles method to get the glasses into my functional component. And let's pass the glass class name to the box component. Now as a first step, let's add a simple background color. So this is a semi-transparent white background. And if we run this, then this is what we get. Still doesn't look very nice, but this is just the starting point, obviously. Now, next step, which is important for this glass morphism effect, is that we add a gradient on top of this semi-transparent background color. And we can use the um, linear gradient CSS option for this. Within CSS, you can indicate the direction that you want this linear gradient to go in. So I'm gonna go from the top left to the bottom right. You achieve that by writing this. 
And then you can add a few different colors to this linear gradient. So let's add two, going from a slightly less transparent white to a completely transparent white that's been put on top of the background color that we defined here. So after applying this gradient, this is basically what you get. It looks already okay, but the text is a bit hard to read. An important aspect of the glass morphing card is that it should have a blur as well, and that's gonna help with readability. So let's add a blur as a backdrop filter. I'm just gonna put this to seven pixels, but obviously later on we can change it and see what looks good. I think seven pixels looks, uh, looks pretty okay. And this is what you get. Next, let's separate the card a bit from the background by adding a box shadow. I'm gonna add a pretty big shadow here. Let's also use a dark gray color, something like this. If we add that, then this is the effect. As you can see, it's pretty subtle, but it still helps. Now next, what you wanna do is add a border radius. And that looks like this. And finally, what you might wanna do is add a colored border to this glass so that it looks kind of like a glass panel. And you can achieve that by adding a left and a top border. For example, something like this. And then here we have kind of the end result of this. Now the nice thing, of course, of building React components is that you can add props to customize the visuals of these kind of cards. So let's take another look at that glass card code and see if we can add a few props to make this card a bit more customizable. Now I think the major thing that you might want to change is the actual color of the glass card. And this is a bit problematic at the moment because the color is basically inserted here everywhere into the code in the style. And worse than that, it even has different values of transparency. So how do you generalize this so that you can actually set the color to a different value without having to rewrite all this code here? In order to do that, I'm gonna use a package called color that allows me to change the transparency of colors dynamically, and then use that to change the style of the card. The first thing we need to do is import that package. Second thing that we need to do is add a property so that we can actually pass that color to the card. Let's give that color an initial value of white. Now what I'm gonna do is a neat little trick that changes the use styles function into a function that accepts a color. And then I'm gonna use that color to change the colors that are defined here in the styles. So let's do that. And now I have the color value here, I can use this color package to change that color's transparency to generate all these different colors here in the style. For example, for the background color, instead of this explicit definition here, I can write this. And I can do the same thing for all the colors here in the style. And I'm gonna use string interpolation to put the color values inside here. So let me just go through these values. So now that changes, the card still looks exactly the same, but now I'm able to change the color. Let's try what happens if I change this in the app to a different color now. I have no idea what color this is, but let's find out. All right, that looks really great. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Um, I'm gonna remove this like this, okay, there. And now we're back to our nice little white glass card. Because we have this system of props now and we have a use styles function, I can actually pass other parameters here as well. Let's say I wanna be able to change how much blur takes place. So let's add a second parameter here, which is a number of pixels that the blur effect should be. And let's incorporate that value here, there. And let's also add a blur parameter. There you go. So now it still looks the same, but if I change here the blur parameter to something else, like, I don't know, 20. So you see, we get a much blurrier background. So the way this works with props and then passing these prop values to the use styles function is a really nice way of 
adapting the style on a higher level when you're using this kind of card. What's gonna make this really cool as well is by adding a few motion effects. I'm gonna show you a very nice way of doing that in a few minutes. But first, let's add a few more parameters to make this block even more customizable. So the first parameter I'm going to add, let me just put the blur factor back to its default value. So the first parameter we're going to add is this border. I think some users would like to switch it off. So you just have the glass panel without the white borders. So let's add a property for that to the glass card. So there we have the no borders prop value. One way to do this would be to pass the no borders value to the use styles function and then determine the value here depending on the value of that boolean. But I think that's a, not such a nice way to set it up. And there is actually a really nice library that can do these kind of things like select different classes depending on the setting of flags. And this is the CLS X library. In Material I also use this everywhere in the code. So let's import that here as well. There we have it. And what we can do now is take this border left values and put them into a separate CSS class. And then what you can do is use the CLS X function that I just imported here to construct the classes that should be shown. And that works like this. So we call the CLS X function. We give it this glass style because every glass card is going to need that style. But then we're gonna define an object that says the borders, we only wanna show that if no borders is false. So let's go back again to what it looks like. So this is what it looks like with the borders. And now I go to app and I add the no borders property. And then I'm gonna see this. So you see now the white border is gone. To finish this example, let's add one final property here. And this property is gonna allow us to make the borders not rounded, but make it just a square panel. So default, it's not square. And then let's add another class here called glass rounded. And that's gonna add the border radius. And now it's a very simple extension. I can simply say that I want my glass rounded style only to apply if square is false. So again here, nothing changes. If I go to the app and I make the card square, then I'm gonna have a class without these rounded corners here. So let me just return to the default prop values for this glass card. Please give this video a like, by the way, if you are enjoying it. It helps to support this channel. And now let's go and add a few nice motion effects. Currently, if you refresh the page, basically it's, it's just appearing like this. It's a bit boring. And we can use Material UI transitions to make this look a lot nicer. One that I like very much in particular is the grow effect. And this is very simple to add. You just put it around the component that you want to appear on the screen. And then what we get, if I refresh this page, that it's gonna look like this. There, looks really cool, doesn't it? But let's go a bit further than this. I think it would be nice if these elements on the card would appear in a cascading manner. So currently they just appear all at once, but it would be nice to have them appear one at a time. And I'm gonna add a component that does this in a generic way. And I'm also gonna put this in the GitHub repository. So if you wanna use it in your own projects, feel free to do so. The technique I'm gonna use for this is also the grow transition that you just saw, but I'm gonna create a list of grow transitions and I'm gonna give them a timeout, which increases as the elements go down further in the list. So let's add a grow list component to do this. And again, I'm going to use the material UI box component as a basis for this. So let's define the props. And obviously that should be an interface. Now what I want to do in the grow list is basically iterate over the 
children of this React component and then add a grow animation to each child. Children is of type React node. In order to iterate over a list of children, you need to do it with the react.children.map function. And we pass it the children that we got. And for each child, we're going to run this function. In order to make this work, let's also import React there so we don't get any type errors. And then ideally you would like to do something like this. Now you see that there's a problem here and the issue is actually that it's possible that child is not a valid React component and then you cannot put it into this grow transition thing. So we need to add a check here that child is indeed a valid React component and there is a very simple function that does this. So if it's a valid element then I'm just going to return this grow animation surrounding the element and otherwise I'll just return null since there is nothing to do here. So that gives me a grow animation on each of the children. Let's see what that looks like if we add that to the cart. So what I do is instead of this div that I have here, I'm going to add the grow list. And if I run this, this is what I get. It actually still looks the same because it didn't add any cascading grow. So let's do that now. Now in order to add this cascading grow effect, I'm going to rely on this value of the index parameter and add a timeout to each grow animation. So I'm taking a certain interval value like 500 milliseconds and then multiplying it by index plus one so that also the first child gets a timeout. And when we do this, we get a really nice motion effect. This is what it looks like. It's a bit slow. I think I should make it like 200 or something and then we're gonna get this. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Now obviously it would be nice if we can actually customize this value, so let's add a property for that. So here in the default situation it still looks the same, but now we can change the value if we use the grow list. So let's add another value here. I have to watch out if you make this value too big, this is going to be really annoying to your users. Come on! So overall, it's a really nice effect that's gonna help you make your page look a bit slicker. It's really important, obviously, for authentication and registration page. You wanna reel those users in with beautiful visuals. And then once they're inside the app, it doesn't matter anymore, you can serve them crap. I tried this effect in dark mode as well, but I thought it didn't really look that nice. So I think if you use it, you should limit it to using it in light mode only. Also, don't overuse this effect. Don't put it everywhere, all over the place in your user interface, I think your users are gonna get annoyed by it pretty quickly. Personally, I do like the visuals on some screens, such as these authentication screens, but maybe you don't like it at all. I like it. I'm more of a glass half full person. I think I need to work on my humor. If you wanna check out the code, there's a link to GitHub repository in the description below. Also, if you'd like me to do more web results and stuff like this, just let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you in the next video.